Very often, we fall in love with people who are not quite right for us or who simply do not match with us in the ways that matter. In fact, sometimes in life, we want people who are so different from us that the relationship seems completely unviable. This is what happened to Tom when he was in his early 20s and just starting to make his way in the world. When he was younger, Tom was madly in love with a local girl named Rachel, who came from a very wealthy family. They got along well, they had fun, and she was incredibly beautiful. Tom was hardworking, good-looking, and devoted to Rachel, but she didn't seem interested. One day, he couldn't stand his desire any longer, and he proposed to her. And that was when he found out exactly what the problem was. Rachel said to him, I spend more in a day than you earn in a month. How could I marry you? I can't love someone who can't give me the life I'm used to. Tom was heartbroken. The woman he was certain he wanted to spend his life with wouldn't even look at him simply because he didn't earn enough money. They parted that day. Rachel went on with her life, and Tom left town in search of a change in his fortunes. A decade later, Tom and Rachel met once more. They ran into each other in a shopping mall purely by chance. They were both alone when they bumped into this chance reunion and were shocked to see each other. The feelings were still there for Tom, and for a moment, he thought there might be a chance for them because he had become wealthy over the last 10 years. They spoke for a few moments about life and their situations and then Tom asked if she was still single. She replied that no, she was not, and said, I'm married, actually, to a very wealthy man. He makes about $15,000 per month. We're very happy. We had our honeymoon in Bali, she said, clearly pleased with her fortunes and happy to be able to prove her point to Tom. Surely, she thought, he must see that it could never have worked between them. She was used to having the finest things that life had to offer, while he came from humble beginnings. Tom was heartbroken once more, but tried to seem happy for her. He had to work hard to keep his feelings to himself as Rachel's husband, Sean, approached. As it turned out, however, the two men already knew each other very well. Sean was shocked when Rachel introduced Tom. Hello, it's very nice to see you, sir, he said, and Tom nodded. You too, Mr. Carter, Sean said. Mr. Carter, nice to see you again. Tom kept his feelings hidden and made polite conversation. The two men caught up, all the while Rachel looked between them, trying to figure out how it was that they had come to meet. Eventually, she could stand it no longer and asked her husband how it was that they knew each other already. She was even more shocked when Sean unveiled the truth. Honey, this is my boss. He owns the company and started it from nothing, Sean said, and Rachel knew she had made a mistake. Her husband was a very wealthy man who worked for a big, successful company. A company worth $100 million per year. A company that, it now turned out, was owned by the man who was madly in love with her. The man that she had turned down 10 years ago for being too poor. They made conversation for a further five minutes, talking about vacations, work matters, and various other pursuits and interests. And then Tom excused himself, nursing his broken heart. Rachel didn't tell her husband how they knew each other, but asked what Tom's story was. This was when Sean told something that pulled the bottom out of her world and made her regret her choices. I heard that there was this woman he was in love with and she didn't want him because he had no money. So he started a company so that he could afford to give her the life she was used to, he said. But whenever he reached out to her, she ignored him. So eventually he gave up. He never married though, too hung up in her, I suppose. Imagine how lucky that woman would have been to marry him. Rachel agreed that yes, such a woman would be lucky indeed to have married Tom, but was secretly in turmoil. The man that she had believed was simply not good enough for her had become a huge success. She knew she should be happy for him, but the thought of him moving on to shower another woman with all that love and luxury that she could have had made her feel sick to her stomach. The phrase, too little too late, seemed cruelly appropriate as Tom disappeared into the crowds of the shopping mall, and Sean continued to talk about what a wonderful, intelligent, and powerful man Tom had become, all thanks to love. When it comes to our love lives, we all want a perfect connection with someone who ticks all of the right boxes, but feelings don't always play fair. So, you see, love is a fickle and strange animal, 
but it doesn't pay to reject someone out of hand just because they haven't got everything you want in a partner. Potential is a powerful thing, and the love of a good woman or man can push people to exceed their wildest expectations of themselves. Tom had made a millionaire of himself for the love of a woman who did not want him. Just imagine what he could have become if Rachel had thrown her prejudices to the side to fully support him. A lot of people will certainly agree that the woman got what she deserved. And in the case of this next story, a gold digger gets some pretty heavy karma, and you won't believe the lengths she went to prove that money means everything and nothing else matters. We'll give this couple fictional names to protect their identity, but it's based on a true story. The story begins with a guy named Mark, who dated a girl named Becky for four years. These two were best friends before they dated. Becky was an awesome girl, and Mark ended up loving her dearly. And as far as he knew, they were awesome together, and great as friends and lovers. In fact, they rarely had arguments and got along great. Things were going really well, and Mark ended up proposing to Becky and their plans for getting married were set. It seemed like everything was perfect. And Mark understood that it would be pretty darn impossible to find someone else that he was so compatible with. Of course, when you really love someone, you are sometimes inclined to spoil that person. And Mark was letting Becky go shopping whenever she wanted, kept her fed from a golden spoon, so to speak. And she always had the nicest clothes. Even if Becky wasn't asking, Mark was spoiling her because he loved her and it was just his persona to be as kind as possible. Becky had recently gotten a part-time job working as an assistant making a fair wage, and she needed a phone for her new job. So Mark went out and got her a nice phone that she wanted, and Becky said that she would pay off her old phone with her first check. Things were looking really good for the couple and everyone was happy. But not everything was as it seemed. One day the couple's only car was repossessed by the bank. Becky called the bank and they informed her that Mark was three months late on his payments. Of course, Mark knew that wasn't right, but Becky suddenly told him that things weren't working out. She said that she was tired of being broke and struggling financially and wanted something better out of life besides being broke and in debt. Of course, Becky hadn't worked for a couple of years prior to her new job and had been living off of Mark's paycheck. He was a network engineer, they were living in a decent home, and they had all the latest toys and electronic gadgets. Everything but the car was paid for and it is what you would hardly call struggling. But Becky wasn't having any excuses and left after the bank took the car. Of course, Mark was unhappy about it and left for his mother's house for the day while she packed her things and left. While he was at his mom's house, he paid the repo fees and the past due balance that the bank said that he owed. However, it turned out that the bank had made a big mistake and that the balance was from a different account and they had repossessed his vehicle by accident. The bank fixed the problem and generously applied the balance he paid to his account and gave him back his car. That evening, Mark went back to his home and found that Becky had taken everything. She took all the furniture, except a couch and a bed, collectibles, decorations, and paintings that were hung on the walls, food, and anything else that wasn't nailed down. One must wonder if she even took the ice trays from the freezer. She also took the two cell phones, including the new one that he bought her that he had been paying $300 a month for, and he still owed $1,200 for her two phones. It turns out that she also had a $2,000 loan from Mark's mother which wasn't going to be paid back. Mark sent Becky an email asking for his things back and for the money that she owed. She responded that he was harassing her and that if he ever called her again, she would call the police and her dad would beat him up. Mark then turned off the service to her two cell phones, and she called him from a borrowed phone asking if he planned on telling her that he was going to turn them off. He replied that they were his phones and he didn't need to. This started her on a chain of cruel revenge type events. She tried to turn off his electricity to his home several times, which didn't work because the utility company called him to confirm it, tried selling his car to a dealership without her having possession of it, called the police several times for harassment, dumped trash in his yard and called the homeowners association, and even broke into his house and bizarrely took and left things on many occasions. And Mark had to change the locks and install security cameras in his home. And the thing about the car? 
Becky called the bank and tried to close out the loan by saying he couldn't pay for it and to come and get the car, which failed. Despite all this terrible stuff, Mark's life started to take a turn for the better. Mark ended up getting a nice promotion at his job, a nice raise, and a nice bonus. In fact, things were even better now that Becky was gone out of the picture. Becky ended up living with her mom in a tiny room with no air conditioning and no heater. She tried to buy a car from a friend of Mark who owns a car lot because she had bad credit, but he turned her down on principle alone. She now relies on family or friends to a two-day-a-week job and owes $40,000 for school loans and has four more years of schooling left to go. But hey, it's better than struggling, right? We hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know what you thought about these two women. If you like this video and want to see more, then click the subscribe button and turn on notifications. You'll be glad you did and the first to know when we release new content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.